And welcome back to News On. We want to continue our discussion about this possible conflict of interest. Uh, new story being issued now, new reports about Attorney General Merrick Garland and his connection. Uh, this is actually via connection with his son-in-law, uh, who apparently is in charge of this company that issues equity surveys, among other things. And a lot of people are saying, hmm, something doesn't sit right. Uh, especially a lot of parents who are concerned. This, of course, after uh, he has now issued the FBI to go after parents that he deems to be unruly at some of these school board meetings. And that's where we want to welcome back our panel. Joining us once again, Robin Byro and Melissa Armo. So uh, we all agree that violence, uh, we all think that that is wrong, clearly. But Melissa, you were talking about that most of the video. And I think you're right. Most of the video that I've seen with parents taking issue with some of the topics that are being discussed in classrooms have been whether passionate, I have not seen them turn violent. Having said that, what are your thoughts about this, again, possible conflict of interest when it comes to Merrick Garland's son-in-law? I think when you're the Attorney General of the United States of America, you don't even want the appearance of a conflict of interest. And so therefore, yes, I believe there is a problem. But what are they going to do? They already came out with it. He's obviously not going to step down. Do I think there's an investigation into this? No. So again, like everything else, this administration is highly, highly partisan. They want people that are going to do their bidding. And I think I've said this on this channel before, uh, Fed Chair Powell is coming up. His term is coming up in early 2022. I bet he doesn't get renewed. I bet they find someone else that is more on the Democratic liberal side, even though he's been doing a fairly good job because Trump appointed him, I bet he doesn't continue his term. They want people that are very to the left. And again, that I do not think is what this country voted for. Uh, but Liz, Melissa, let me play just devil's advocate here just for a moment before we move on to the next topic. I seem to recall people criticizing Trump of the same thing. I feel like every time there's a, a new president in office, I mean, they're, they're going to try to align people. They're going to elect judges that they believe will fall more in line with however their political views may lean. I don't know if this is necessarily something different, but maybe it's just me and maybe our viewers have a different opinion. But Robin, I see you nodding your head uh, in agreement with I remember with the that. conflicts of interest talks. I remember very well those conflict of interest talks with the Trump well, campaign and Trump well, organization, Kushner and all that. Yeah. Right. And if memory serves me correctly, I think Merrick Garland would actually be a prime example of that because there were a number of Republicans who were in support of Merrick Garland actually serving on the Supreme Court. But as soon as President Barack Obama nominated him, suddenly that support was withdrawn. And again, we see this on both sides of the aisle. Do the American people want to see that? I don't think so. I think most of them, I think you are correct, Melissa. I think most people do want to see, God forbid, compromise. And we can get something done. But I do want to move on and talk about another issue at the forefront, obviously COVID. So new reports say that the Delta wave seems to be receding. That's good news. So the White House is now reporting that it's going to quadruple uh, the production of home COVID tests along with increasing uh, free testing centers. Meanwhile, Los Angeles now requiring vaccine passports for indoor activities, kind of following suit of what they're doing in your city, New York City, Melissa. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have Florida now voting whether or not to penalize 10 school districts for defying the state's mandatory mask establishments. In other words, the governor here is saying parents have the right to choose, not school districts. And a lot of school districts decided to go against the governor's wishes. So we'll see what happens there. But GOP senators are demanding now an explanation now to the administration's actions on early treatments for COVID-19. This is the other hot button issue. So, and you also have medical personnel saying that they are feeling, this is a new report, this is kind of startling information coming from our partners at Justin News that they're feeling a financial squeeze if they don't tow this line of promoting vaccines. And now you got the GOP also accusing the White House and the CDC of basically being biased and being pro-vaccine and not for alternatives 
which we know that may help boost your immune system. Of course, all of this comes as an undercover investigation from a conservative news group. Uh, Project Veritas is now raising some questions among people. Uh, this report centers around several scientists who work at Pfizer, which are now saying that antibodies, in fact, are a better protector than actually getting the vaccine. Take a look at this. So I mean, well protected? Yeah. Like as much as the vaccine? Probably more. How so? Like how much more? You're protected most likely for longer since it was a natural response. When you actually get the virus, you're going to start producing antibodies against like multiple pieces of virus. And not only just like the outside portion, like the inside portion, the actual virus. So your antibodies are probably better at that point than the vaccination. We're like bred and taught to be like, like vaccine is safer than, than actually getting COVID. And that's like, like, honestly, we have to, we have to do so many seminars on this. Like, you have no idea. Bread and tot. Uh, there you just heard. Again, this is according to Project Veritas. That was undercover video of individuals working for Pfizer uh, saying right there that your own antibodies are more effective than the vaccine, that they're being bred and taught to tow this line to promote vaccines. Robin, your reaction to what you just saw and heard? This is tricky. Uh, we know. First of all, let me say this, the Biden administration, I can give the answers. If people, Republicans are demanding answers, the answers are that President Biden said that he would trust the scientists. So the studies show that if you get the vaccine, you are far less inclined to actually die if you correct, con, con, uh, contract COVID. You may still get it because of the Delta variant. Uh, we, we all know this to be true, you, but your symptoms would be far less uh, you're not going to die from it. That I just don't want people to die. Republicans can ill afford right now for uh, some of their base to a core group of their voting bloc to be dying because of COVID. I fully support any th holistic approaches to medicine, uh, but I don't want people to die because of vaccine hesitancy. That is a problem. But if your best defense, again, hearing it right there, are in fact antibodies and not taking the vaccine. And mind you, there may be people whose doctors are advising them not to take the vaccine. We've already talked about hospital sh shortages sure. with medical personnel who are against these mandates. Why is that message not getting out? That message is not getting out because we want people to stay alive. Your chances of dying from COVID are significantly compounded if you don't get vaccinated. Natural immunity will not keep you from dying. Uh, yes, you may your symptoms may be less, but you you're still standing. But they're saying far it's your best of dying. defense. It's I don't your trust the scientists. Defense. I'll tell you right now. Let me say this. I just watched a video of a scientist sipping a mimosa while telling us this. I don't really trust that person specifically. So you don't trust this individual specifically? Uh, that didn't look, that was, optics matter. And literally he was sitting there on camera just now sipping a mimosa and telling us uh, this. And that, that I, I would like to hear from other scientists, not just someone that was cherry picked uh, while brunching on mimosas. <laughs> What about Anthony Fauci, who's been the top scientist yeah, who uh, has gone back and forth on things, never mind his alleged connections to the Wuhan lab, financial ones at that? Anthony Fauci, I, I, let me say this. I appreciate any scientists, anyone who evolves with changing science, science changes. We've learned more about the virus as time has gone on. Yes, what he said early on in early pandemic a year and a half ago is a lot different than what we're what he's saying now because we know a lot more about it. He has evolved. All I right. don't want a scientist. I want you to hold that thought, Robin. I'm in. not trying to interrupt you, but I do have to go to sure. commercial. So I'm going to ask both of you to stick around so you have more ample time to respond to that. Melissa, I want to get your reaction to that as well. And here's an alarming story. A woman, talking about vaccines, uh, being denied a kidney transplant because she hasn't had the vaccine? We're gonna have more details on that coming up next.